Dearly Father, we uh, thank you for this day. Thank you for the break, which is about to start. Help us to, uh, again, Lord, glorify you what we do this day, Lord. In your name I pray. Amen. So do you guys have any questions about anything in particular? Yes. Not at all. Twenty-eight from ten point two. I can try. Let's see here. So we're supposed to find the point. He says R theta symmetric to the given point. A about the x axis, B uh, about the y axis, C about the origin. And he wants us to express answer with r greater than zero and theta, an element of zero to two pi not included. All right. So number 28, what's the point we're given here? We have three Oh, I guess my question is, what does this notation mean? So I'm guessing, um, yeah, 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 I'm sorry. I don't think I've introduced this notation in class. Like my suggestion was that, um, I think he introduces this notation back, where does he do it? Do, 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 back start of this section, yeah? yeah? Maybe, 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 yeah, page 479. Um, well, yeah, okay, the, the, the blue box definition on page 478. So what I had, what I had suggested was that this, I, I was gonna, I, I mentioned this notation the other day, three, so I, like I was suggesting you could say that is, is the um, R theta, was my, the notation I threw out the other day in class, but that would be, you know, just to make an explicit connection between his notation and my notation would be that. Um, okay, so let's do, let's draw a picture. Right? So we're, we're at radius three, right? Minus five pi over four, where is that? So this, when I think of this, I think of a clockwise rotation. Negative radian, so I sweep in the not counterclockwise. Counterclockwise would go like this, right? So clockwise goes the opposite way. That's, that's, that's a little bit more than pi, right? So I think that would be like, if you want to think about it in terms of a motion, it would be like this, right? So let's see here. We could express the point, it's at 3 pi over 4. Um, I mean, just, this is equal to 3 comma 3 pi over 4, if you like, right? I'm sorry, I'll trying to buy into his notation here for a second. So would you agree that we can, we can look at it like that instead? I just just to get started, I think it's easier to look at it like that. I mean, so the point itself is, is here, right? And now we just need to think geometrically, right? So if you reflect that across the y-axis, where'd you go? Y-axis, so. So it'd be over here, right? 
Oh, so you say pi over 4? So this is, um, so it's still, how far is it? It's still 3, right? It's still radius 3, but pi over 4, yeah. So this would be the answer to part um, B, yeah. Nick, why didn't you do part A first? I don't know. <laughs> I have no good answer for that. I guess the question you might ask is, why on earth did he ask the question like this? I think mostly just to make you guys think about reflecting things across axes again, because you get rusty with that idea, you know? So this just throws it back in the mix. Um, I mean, that's one of the goals of homework, is to teach you things, right? So. Not always things that have been said in class. Um, let's see here. So this, although I guess I'm changing that now. But uh, <laughs> so this would be the reflection across the y-axis, right? <laughs> x-axis, right? So about the x-axis. And it's still 3 away, right? And now 3 pi over 4. Ooh, well, I, you could say you got choices, right? Oh, actually, you don't have a choice. Why can't I do this? I mean, I was thinking that to start with, but that doesn't fit the format, right? Yeah, we have to put it in 0 to 2 pi, so geometrically that's equal to um, yeah, 5 pi over 4 things. So there you go, 3, 5 pi over 4. How about the origin? So the origin, you just basically invert. You take p to minus p, so it just basically flips it over like here. So that would be 3 and then, um, yeah, 7 pi over 4. I was about to say minus pi over 4, but you guys beat me to it. Fine. I'll accept your 7 pi over 4. So. Reflections preserve the distance from the origin, right? Doesn't change the 3, it just changes the angle. The reflections about the origin, I should say, right? I mean, so reflections about an axis through the origin or through the origin itself, these sorts of things. But anyway, um, yep, you have another question? Uh, okay, so here we're looking at r sine theta equals to 1. Right? We're supposed to analyze r sine theta equals to 1, and what are we supposed to figure out about it? Test the curve for symmetry about the coordinate axes or for symmetry about the origin. see here. So what would that mean? Like, let me, let me just throw some examples out for a second, see if we can understand what kind of test we should be looking at. How about this? Here's a parabola, right? y equals x squared. This is symmetric about what? y axis, right? Yeah. So wh what does this have? This has f of I mean, it's an even function, right? f of x is equal to f of minus x. But more to the point, if, if, um, if x is an element of the object, then I, just, I need some, let me say, if x is an element of the set s, then minus x is also an element of the set s. This is what's meant by symmetry. Um, oh, 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 sorry. Not, not there yet. I'm missing something, right? My previous argument was pointless. Let's say x comma y. Um, 
minus x comma y there. Now, now it's got a point. So, I mean, that's the thing that makes it symmetric, right? That this point is paired with that point. That both of those are on the shape. That's the symmetry, this pairing, right? Um, so that, that would be symmetry about, or a boot, if you're Canadian, um, y-axis, right? So you can kind of go from here. If x, y is an S, right, then um, I, I should say imp implies, really. I don't want then there. I want implies. If x, y in an element of S implies that what here? x comma minus y, right, is an element of S, then that gives us symmetry about what? x-axis, right? So like, for example, this shape has symmetry about the x-axis. Right. Notice that um, if you have the point here, x comma y, then we have the point down here, x comma minus y, right? You have this pairing, that's symmetry about the, about the x-axis. What's symmetry through the origin then? Minus x, you put minuses on both, right? <coughs> oh man, for all of a sudden. For example, if I have something like this, I suppose. So like here's the point, you know, here one, one, two, looking at the line y equals two x. Then we also have the point down here, right? Minus one, um, minus two. And that, that all, everything on, everything in the, um, it has to hold for arbitrary elements in the set, right? It's not enough that there's just one pair exhibiting the symmetry. It has to be any, you know, it has to be for each, to, to be more clear for each. I, th I still don't think I've said it quite right. If each, I'm missing an important word here. Well, I, I guess it's okay, but. Uh, so, okay, so that's in terms of, that's what it looks like in terms of Cartesian coordinates. How does that, how do these ideas translate into polar coordinates though, right? Does anybody know? What's up? You say just change angles? So we, Is it just that? So you're saying x, x axis symmetry. That was about, sorry. Uh, you say take theta and shift it to what? Say again? Oh, just to minus theta. Symmetry about the y-axis. And symmetry about the origin. That one I can do. <laughs> that one, you just take R and replace it with minus R, right? So more, more completely, the question is, all right, so like, 
Let me say this in more, more system. So if we have if we have r sine theta equals to one, right? Does that imply that r times the sine of minus theta is equal to one? It does not, right? Because if r sine theta is equal to one, then this by is the fact that sine is odd gives us minus r sine theta, right? Which is equal to minus one, of course, which is not equal to one. So this is so hence um, you know r sine theta equals to one is not um, symmetric about what is it uh, what we just test for here x axis right now everybody see why he's saying that so like I mean I think what what King has said is, is, is very reasonable. See here, this is theta, right? Then if that's theta, then down there is minus theta, right? So to test, test for symmetry about the x-axis, you just flip theta to minus theta in your equation and see if you still have a solution. Assuming that theta gives you a solution, when you plug in minus theta in the place of the same equation, does it still give you a solution? If not, it's not a symmetry. I mean, the, 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 the object you're looking at, the graph you're looking at, is not symmetric with respect to the x-axis in that case. Over here, see how we got, so if this is theta, right, then this over here is what? Right, pi minus theta. So if we assume that theta is a solution, theta, plugging in theta gives me a solution, it should be that when we plug in pi minus theta, we get a solution as well. So how about that? So that, that's point, point number one, no, not x. Um, how about y? So assume that r sine theta is equal to one, right? And then try it out. r times the sine of what is it? Pi minus theta, which is equal to what? That's r sine pi cosine minus theta minus uh, rather, yeah, well, minus. It depends on how I look at it. I'm going to look at it as minus r um, cosine pi sine theta. You can either look at it as minus, or you can add the plus, add the minus theta and put a plus out here. But however you do it, you end up with this, right? I mean, so that's zero. And this is equal to r sine theta because cosine theta is one. And so, of course, this is equal to one again. Woo! -hoo. So as you can see, if the point, if r comma theta is in the solution, then r comma pi minus theta is also in the solution set. That shows that we have symmetry about the x-axis. There, of course, is another more obvious way to do this problem, right? What is it? Yeah, just change it to Cartesian at the start, right, exactly. So. <laughs> I mean, what we're doing is useful because this analysis we're going over will work for more complicated polar examples, right? But for this example, what we're doing is wholly unnecessary because, of course, you could go back at the start and go what? Our, our sine theta is what? Y. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so y equals 1 doesn't change when you change x to minus x, right? So it's symmetric about the, the y-axis, right? But it is not symmetric about the, the x-axis, because if y is equal to 1, minus y is not equal to 1. <laughs> and it's not going to be symmetric about the origin either, is it? But that's, that's pretty obvious in either analysis, you know? Here, let's, let's do a different example now that we've started this discussion. Uh, is there another particular one you'd like to do, Hope? that same flavor. Let's look at, let's, let's look at r squared sine 2 theta, number 35, r squared sine 2 theta, and analyze its symmetry properties. So basically the question is, again, does this polar graph you know, analyze possible symmetries of this. Uh, that was equal to something? What was it, guys? 
<laughs> oh, of course, none of you are carrying your books. I wouldn't if I were you either. Let's see here. Um, uh, equals to one. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's just like you, you only get one back, right? So like once it's, once it's messed up, then it's messed up. Um, so analyze possible symmetries of um, the polar graph above. So first of all, it is symmetric about the origin, right? How can I see that? Right, it, it, exactly. If r squared sine 2 theta is equal to 1, that implies that minus r squared sine 2 theta is also equal to 1. Because this, of course, is just r squared. What about the other ones? If you look at, let's see here. Let's see, let's check for um, x-axis symmetry, right? Symmetry about the x-axis. You start writing it like a civilized, ew, yuck. Symmetry about x-axis. So what are we supposed to do? We trade what? We trade theta for negative theta, theta, for negative theta all right? So assume r squared sine 2 theta is equal to 1. And consider r squared sine of minus 2 theta. Is that equal to 1? Well, no. That's equal to minus r squared sine of 2 theta because sine is an odd function. So I pull the minus out. That's equal to minus 1, which of course is not equal to 1. Fail. Right. Symmetry about the uh, about the y-axis. How about that one? So we assume r squared sine. Sorry, it's getting old, but r squared sine of two theta is equal to one, and then we consider replacing theta with pi minus theta. Right. So we consider r squared sine of 2 times pi minus theta. What's that give us? Oh, I was hoping that this 2 pi would like get absorbed in the sine. But the thing is, we still got that. I mean, this is r squared sine of 2 pi minus 2 theta, right? which is r squared sine of minus 2 theta because of the 2 pi periodicity of sine. But that's minus r squared sine 2 theta because sine is odd. And that's minus 1. And I don't know about you, but minus 1 is not equal to 1. Again, fail. All right, it fails the test. So it looks like it's only symmetric about the origin. Why do we care about these tests? To graph, right? This gives us quick checks on our graphs. Right? It's very easy to check about. I mean, OK, symmetry about the x and y axis, I admit. I mean, I think, I guess symmetry about the y axis is, the x axis is pretty easy to check for. The y axis seems kind of like a pain. I don't know. Definitely the origin check is really fast, though, right? So if you've got some graph that should be symmetric about the origin and you see that it's not, you know you did something wrong. So you can try to look harder at how you graphed it, you know? But exactly, it is another tool to help us graph. Or to be more positive, if you make part of the graph and you know it has a symmetry, you can just replicate by the symmetry, right? So like. For example, r squared sine 2 theta equal to 1. What's that? What's that graph anyway? It's what? It's actually xy equals to 1 half. <laughs> it's xy equals to 1 half. 
Ah, yes, trigonometry for the win. Very good. See, if you, you use trigonometry on these, you're going to take all the fun out of it. <laughs> yes, as usual, the more clever solution is the easier one. Um, you, you stole my thunder. I have no way to. <laughs> now I'm just going to feel silly if I graph it. <laughs> Fine, I'll feel silly. Um, R squared <laughs> sine of 2 theta equals to 1. So what he was saying, and it's a very good thought, is that that's really R squared times 1 half sine theta cosine theta equals to 1, a.k.a. R cosine theta R sine theta, in fact, this is probably the best way to graph this, equals to 2, a.k.a. x times y equals to 2. So the graph is this, because it's y equals to 2 over x. So roughly speaking, it's the hyperbola rotated a bit. This is a hyperbola that opens that way but maybe you've been taught it's the reciprocal function. Yeah, now that I've done that, I just can't bring myself to graph it in polars. <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> Do you have another question? Let me get away from this. <laughs> What's that? Ah! I fail. I, I fail. Let's see here. Although to the level of my um, graph, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> heuristically speaking, same graph. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, let's look at an example. If you guys don't mind. So here's the problem. Parametrize ah, See, that's too boring. I, I'm not going to do that one. Let me make it more exciting. And let's see here. Do you guys want to parameterize it clockwise or counterclockwise? Counterclockwise, okay. Do you want me to add an I? I could add an I. Okay, I'll add an I. There we go. We'll, we'll do a clockwise I. Kinda, I kind of want to disorient it. It looks better without the orientation. <laughs> kind of terrifying. All right, so, um, so let's suppose that uh, let's suppose then I'll give you a couple points here. Let's suppose that this point is um, <laughs> uh, let's say say that's one comma um, I don't know. can't make up my mind. Square root of 15 there. <laughs> and this point down here is uh, 1 comma minus the square root of 15. All right. And let's see here. That's not part of the graph, but uh, 
that is, oh, I better make it bigger than one. I, I, I mean, sorry, I have to take that back, guys. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Take it, let me take it back, take it back. Let's say that's at 3 comma 4, and this is at 3 comma minus 4. And I guess that would put this at like 2 comma, 2 comma 5 or something like that. Is that inside the circle, though? I'm a little worried. Let me make this bigger. You're like, would you make up your mind already? I will eventually. Sorry, 4 or 5. <laughs> Um, oh, sorry, 4, 2, yeah. I know, I'm, I'm very, 4 minus 2, I should, you know, if I had a graph board, I could fix these, I could make up my mind easier, but, all right, so now I'm assuming that the, um, let's say the eye has radius 1 half, all right, and I'm also assuming that um, that's the origin, yeah. Okay. So where do you want to start? <laughs> we can make t equals zero wherever you like, really. The origin. <laughs> What's that? Four, you, okay, you want to make this t equals zero? I'll, I'll accept it. That is the laziest answer. Very good. Very good, Nathan. Um, <clears throat> all right, so here we go. To um, parameterize the outside, we should do what? Outside circle. Um, I would suggest that we use, let's see here, x equals to, I guess I need to figure out what the radius of that circle is, eh? Has radius what? The square root of 4 squared plus 2 squared, right? That's the square root of 20, right? Some students feel the need to write 2 square root of 5. It's been drilled into them there to make you feel better. Um, I'm not sure you're here, actually. But uh, so that's the, that's the radius. So we could do um, square root of 20 um, cosine. And I, I would tend to use um, t plus something personally, and then y is equal to the square root of 20. The sine of t plus something. The thing is, I want to figure out what that angle is. The standard angle of 4, 2. So what is the standard angle of 4, 2? So 2 divided by 4. In terms of degrees, it's 26.56 degrees, but I kind of want radians. So let me, oops, get me out of there. Well, let me just say that. Um, inverse tangent of 1 half. Since it's nothing particularly pretty. Poor planning on my part, right? If I made this Pac-Man have a bigger bite, I could have done it from pi over 4 or something, you know? But there you go. Do you guys ever uh, stick your finger in your ear? Stick your finger in your ear and do this. Try it. Just, just try it. Do you see the relevance? It does. It does sound oh, like pac Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Hee <laughs> <laughs> hee. Um, okay. And this is for. <laughs> Who's totally coming today? 
zero, <laughs> zero, <laughs> zero less than or equal to t, less than or equal to, see, and if, if I, I have angular speed one, right? So basically this is, I, I need this to sweep from here over to here with my formulas. Basically, I want it to go all the way, almost 2 pi, right? But not, not quite 2 pi. I want it 2 pi less twice this angle we just found, right? So this angle is the inverse tangent of 1 half. So I can just do for 0 less than or equal to t less than or equal to 2 pi minus twice that inverse tangent. Does that make sense? In terms of the, that will get me from our starting point at the upper lip all the way around back down here, back to the business end of Pac-Man. Let's see here. Now we got to get this next, the line. I should use some color coding here. Let me say the blue line. How can you parameterize this blue line? So we've got <clears throat> 4 comma minus 2. Um, plus, let me call this number um, t, um, t1, all right? So plus, um, t minus t1, all right? And then, um, 0, 0, minus 4, minus 2 will work, I think. Let me rewrite. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I have, um, I'm misbehaving here. I'm, I'm writing the vector parameterization. So in other words, x is equal to 4 plus t minus t1 times 4, so minus, 4 minus, um, <coughs> oh man, 4 minus 4 times t minus t1, and y is equal to minus 2 minus, well, plus 2 times t minus t1. This is going to be for t1 less than or equal to t, less than or equal to t1 plus 1. That will get me the line, and that is based on. I'm, 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 in, I'm just insisting, for the sake of being annoying, that we're using the same parameter. In calculus three, when you're facing a problem like this, and you actually have to do an integration over Pac-Man or something, what you want to do is you don't want to find one sweeping parameterization for the whole Pac-Man. You parameterize each part separately, and then if you're doing an integration over it, you integrate each part separately with respect to the different parameterizations. I'm going through the hassle of making them link up just to show you kind of how you do that sort of thing. Um, don't misinterpret this as me saying that you have to do that. I mean, you could present using, you could use different parameters on each piece in order to get the whole thing right. And then you could, you, you wouldn't be forced with linking one piece to the next, which is kind of the, the most painful part of this. <clears throat> okay, so does that make sense? Now if we put, pl plug in t equals, t, t equals to t1, what happens? t equals to t1, this is zero, that's zero we get 4 minus 2, right? What happens when you put t, t equal to t1 plus 1? Then this gives you 1. This gives you 1. You get 4 minus 4, 0. You get minus 2 plus 2, 0, which is where we want to be, right? So this right here is t equals to t1. At the origin is t equals to t1 plus 1 in our current setup. All right, now we got to do the upper lip. I don't know, does Pac-Man have lips? No. But, uh, so next, we should let x equal to basically 4 times um, t minus t1 minus 1, and y equals to 2 times t minus t1 minus 1. That makes sense if you plug in t1 plus 1 for time. It gives you the origin. What happens when you plug in 
So we're looking at T1 plus 1 less than or equal to T less than or equal to T1 plus 2. At this time, at time T1 plus 2, where does that put us? We're all the way back where we started, right? So we've, we've, we've come full, full Pac-Man, right? And so all I'm doing is I'm just using the different pieces we've looked at, right? And I'm just putting them together. And then I guess we still got to throw in the I, right? There's no way to, we have to kind of jump there, right? It's a, so the I, I would let um, X equal to, let's use a different parameter for the I. I I'm, I'm tired of using time for it. Um, so if you don't mind, um, um, the center is two, right? The radius is one half, so I do two plus one half um, cosine of minus, let's say, lambda, and y equals to five plus one half the sine of minus lambda. And that'll be for um, 0 less than or equal to lambda less than or equal to 2 pi. That'll go, you, go all the way around. The reason I put minus there is that makes it go clockwise. Alternatively, you can like, what, could, what else could you do to make it go clockwise? You could like just use sine. And, I think if you flip the sine and the cosine in the formulas, it makes it go clockwise too. There's various other ways to get clockwise circle parameterizations, but this is the one I like because it's most obvious, like, what that is. <clears throat> so if you get your name, get your piece of paper out, write your name at the top, and say, yes, we did have class the day before break, it'd be worth some points to you. So I'm just ignoring, except for Nathan. No. <laughs> Sorry. Hey guys, so that's about all I have for today. If, you, if you're studying over break for this class and you want to like get ahead for the next test, there's something that I can't offer to all of my classes, but I can offer to you, which is that you can see me do about two dozen homework problems from the book last year. Like, and, if you do look at lectures from last year over break, if you're studying over break, make sure you watch the later section. The later section is the better section. Um, what's that? Yeah, by the later section, we found most of the mistakes, and I'm mostly awake. And um, I find that if I watch it at double speed, it's not too annoying. Like, double speed is fun. Um, but I'm pretty, I was watching some of those just to remind myself, you know, what we do in here, what I did in here. And um, I think I've covered a good bit of what we need to cover, but there's, there's still a few things that are missing, right? I'm still talk I haven't talked about surface area of solids of revolution yet. So there's that application missing. I need to talk more about centers of mass and how to, how to calculate that. I haven't done that enough yet. I mean, yeah, I talked about, you know, I talked about, I, I was starting to talk about how to find the center of mass of the solid region. But there's an easier problem I should also talk about, which is like, how do you find the center of mass of a wire? See, we have all the necessary tools to do that in here now. So I should, I should show you how to do that. Um, so there's some things like that we should cover after break. But we have covered the major parts of the, the we have covered the major aspects of the material that's on test four at this, this point, right? So what you need to do is to, you know, try to work out some homework problems. Make sure you understand. If you don't, ask questions. We got lots of time in here for your questions, but you got to ask them, right? So, so just as a, you know, I, next semester I was planning to give weekly quizzes, right? Where you have, I think I already announced. If you're if you're signed up for next semester, I had planned for weekly quizzes or something. Would you prefer? Just a question. Would you prefer to have homework that you turn in that was graded? as opposed to weekly quizzes. What do you think would be more helpful? Mm 
Don't have a, don't have a firm opinion on it one way or the other? <laughs> All right. Is this Calc 3? Calc yeah, I'm actually talking about some of your futures. <laughs> not, <laughs> not whatever happens to the next batch of victims in Calc 2 next year. I mean, honestly, it, 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 these questions, these, these formatting issues don't matter that much. I mean, the bottom line is this. Are you going to take the time to do some homework and to ask questions when you're stuck on something? If you do that, you have a chance at this class. If you don't do that, it doesn't go well, <laughs> right? So. And that's really not specific to this class. That's pretty much every math class you'll take here, right? Doing the homework is doing the class. Like attendance is a necessary but not a sufficient, not a sufficient thing to uh, pass. I mean, this is not. Well, anyways, the camera's still on. All right, yeah, All right. yeah. You turn off.